We're going to continue reading Futuring by Edward Cornish, Chapter 4, Understanding Change, Patterns of Change. Some changes are part of a sequence pattern of changes, so once we know the pattern, we can anticipate what is likely to come later. The most familiar of these patterns of change is the growth cycle in animals and plants. A moth egg develops into a larva, which forms a cocoon and pupates into a moth that will lay more eggs, restarting the cycle. A knowledge, a knowledge of stages of development can help us to anticipate future change. A veterinarian examining the Dachshund or Greyhound puppy can forecast its adult size by knowing the normal size attained by the breed. Similar Similarly, arborist can forecast with limits the eventual height of a sapling by knowing the tree species to which it belongs. Because human growth cycles controlled by our genes are highly dependable, we can confidently forecast that an infant human would develop into a toddler, child, adolescent, and adult. Since these sequences of changes reoccur so reliably, we can use them to make detailed forecasts of the changes as individuals is likely to undergo as time passes. Our forecasts may occasionally prove erroneous, but they are reasonably accurate and useful. Certainly, we should not assume that the infant we see today will still be the same helpless little person 20 years from now. The growth cycle helps demographics to make useful population forecasts. For example, if we know how many three-year-olds there are in a population, we can estimate how many children will be starting the first grade in two years. Authorities can take steps to minimize overcrowding in classrooms. <clears throat> I was one sentence. Forecasts of the U.S. population over the next five years can be reasonably accurate because all the adults of the most of the people who will be counted five years from now are already alive. But like other forecasts, estimates of future population become less reliable as we attempt to look farther and farther into the future. Over a period of decades, birthdays, birth rates may change greatly due to such factors as new contraceptive technologies, government policies, and cultural attitudes. The U.S. birth rate plunged in the 1930s due to the Great Depression, then soared in the late 1940s with the end of the Great Depression and World War Two. In the 1960s, U.S. baby boom came to an end, causing the birth dearth as also affected many other industrialized nations. Current demographic forecasts for the long-term future may be upset if scientists discover new ways to reverse the aging process. But an anti-aging drug may be count countered countered, yes, by new plagues such as AIDS and SARS or a resurgence of other diseases. The Black Death, a plague that ravaged Europe for, uh, between 1347 and 1351, claimed about a third of the continent's population. It was the greatest catastrophe the Western world had experienced up to that time. Due to the many uncertainties, demographers now create a number of scenarios for future population growth. The scenarios often reflect varying assumptions of birth rate, which is highly subjective to fluctuation due to many causes. In November 1965, an electrical blackout of the northeastern United States caused a surge of births nine months later. Stages... Stages uh, in technology and society. New technologies do not evolve as a in a... And as formulaic a matter as anatomical growth, but they do go through recognized stages of innovation, which each successful technological advance representing an advantage in the practicality or use of the technology. Technological forecaster Joseph P. Martino lists the following stages. Scientific findings. Basic scientific understanding of some phenomenon has been developed. Laboratory feasibility. A technical solution to a specific problem has been identified and laboratory model has been created. Operating prototype. A device intended for a particular operational environment has been built. Commercial introduction or operational use. The innovation is not only technologically successful, but also economically feasible. Widespread ad adoption. The innovation has shown itself to be superior in some way to whatever we used previously perform its function, and it begins to replace previous methods. Diffusion to other areas. The innovation becomes adopted for the purpose of other than the originally intended. Social and economic impact. The innovation has changed the behavior of society or has somehow involved a, a substantial portion of the economy. Knowing these stages, the means of the <clears throat> knowing these stages means that if we recognize a certain stage in the development or diffusion of a new technology, we may be able to anticipate future changes. If we recognize that a potential change could be important, we can watch and for confirmation. Then and when we get it, take whatever action we think is appropriate. Social or political issue also evolved by identifiable stages, according to Graham T. T. Motier, who studied the is issue attention cycle while working for business and political clients. Initially, a few articles on the emerging issue may appear in scholarly journals. Later come articles in the general press and bills introduced to the local legislators. Eventually, laws are passed and implemented. Knowledge of these stages allows us to monitor issues that may eventually generate new laws and government actions. 
Nations go through a series of stages as their economies develop, and some economies have fo followed a pattern similar to that of the Western economies in the 18th and 19th centuries. Just as advanced nations did earlier, a developing nation today is likely to shift its focus from agriculture to first-stage industries like cloth production. Later, it may move into heavy industries like steel mills and eventually develop a high-tech laboratories. However, the stages of development model based largely on what happened during Britain's Industrial Revolution may not prove a reliable guide to the future. Page 48. Now, due to globalization of the world economy, multinational companies can set up factories to manufacture high-tech products in developing countries. Meanwhile, heavy industries are more difficult to develop in the third world because of global surplus of certain industrial, industrial products, such as steel and automobiles. To make matters worse for developing nations, industrialized countries set up barriers to prevent them from selling to local consumers. Theories of economic development thus may need refining, but they do help us to think about the sort of things we may anticipate as a country's econo economy develops. Change and stability. Change is star on the stage of world events. Change gets the applause and hisses because people notice change and respond quite emotionally, both positively and negatively. But change has a twin, continuity, which is just as important but gets little notice. In futuring, however, continuity gets a chance to star, at least at times, because continuity is what enables our enterprise. If everything constantly changed, we could not possibly know anything about the future, or anything else for that matter. We are able to anticipate future changes because of the continuity of the past with the future through the medium of time. Though... Change is normally our focus. We have to recognize much remains constant, and it is this continuity that allows us to anticipate future events and plan what we should do. In this chapter, we looked at the types of change in which the continuity plays a prominent role. The continuous sort of change is sometimes described as linear because it seems... Where am I? Because it seems to move ahead in a straightforward manner. We can identify patterns in this type of change, and it is often not difficult to use them to anticipate something that will happen in the future. But there is another kind of change which may be described as discontinuous, nonlinear, or even quirky. Nonlinear change seems to work like a Rube Goldberg invention. An impulse of change jumps from one situation to another in a wildly erratic manner. This less predictable sort of change arises from the fact that we live in a world of interacting systems subject to the forces of change and chaos. This continuous change is extremely difficult to anticipate, but it is very important, so we will look at it in the next chapter.